Hello, uh, my name is Marius and I will talk about Bitcoin script. To start discussing Bitcoin script, we have to first introduce a couple of concepts um, related to the machinery that uh, blockchain, blockchains use for expressing computations. So, um, <clears throat> the sessions related to Bitcoin to blockchain script and Bitcoin script are divided into four parts. In the first part, we will talk about stack reverse Polish notation and uh, stack based virtual machines. And those are kind of fundamental concepts that are useful uh, to understand when discussing uh, some of the blockchains or in particular Bitcoin script. Uh, blockchains use a very simple model of computations to store the computations on this on on the on chain uh, and those are three concepts are useful to to understand the first one is stack stack is a, a very simple data structure uh, which we typically um, represent as um, a layered um, values that are stored on top of one another so if we could Imagine that this line is the bottom of the stack. Um, we can put elements on top of the stack, like for example, number 10 and number 20. Uh, and we can put another value, now, for example, four. Uh, and then we can take values out of the stack and putting things on top and taking things from the top uh, means that we have sort of a first in last out queue. Uh, so the, the first element that we put in will be the last element consumed from the from our data structure. So um, there are a couple of um, let's clear let's clear the the stack. Um, there are a couple of instructions that are useful uh, to know. Uh, one of the instructions is push. So push um, puts a given value or a given element on top of the stack. Uh, another uh, useful operation that we can do on the stack is pop. And pop basically doesn't take any argument um, at all. Uh, it is basically consuming the top element from the stack. And then um, another element, uh, another in, in, um, a, a operation that we could do is dupe. Uh, which stands for duplicate. Um, so as you notice, uh, most of the instructions for operating on the stack, they don't take any parameters. They don't take any arguments. In fact, the push operation typically is, um, in, in some programming languages, you could say push 10, uh, but you can basically just say 10 and that will be an equivalent of pushing a, a value or literal 10 on top of the stack, right? So let's write uh, a, a short program. Uh, let's put 10, 20, dupe and pop. And if we execute this, uh, we typically execute from left, left to right. So the 10 means we putting 10 on top of the stack. Then we have um, number 20. So we put number 20 on top of the stack. Then we have the operation dupe and duplicate takes the top element of the stack, which in our case is 20 and puts it on top of the stack. So it will be 20 and then pop consumes the top element from the stack, which means it eats that up. Um, so then our top element on the stack is 20 and then there is 10 and then there is a bottom of the stack. All right. So this is um, a simple form of a queue and we can grow um, the elements from the top and um, consume them from the, from the top. If we, uh, for example, write pop and pop now, um, we will consume, the first pop will consume the first element, the top element of the stack. The second one will consume that one. If we now do a pop, uh, that would mean that we would like to consume an element of the stack, but there is nothing on the stack, which means there will be an error. So at that point, 
uh, program will fail. Uh, there will be a panic uh, or a program failure, which means uh, our program will crash because uh, there is nothing to consume from the stack and pop operation requires an element to be uh, consumed. All right, so uh, the next uh, interesting concept that we need is a reverse Polish notation. Um, this is a postfix notation for operands or functions. It has been invented by Jan Łukasiewicz in 1924. Um, he has a Polish nationality. That's why the, the notation is called reverse Polish notation. Um, and it has been facilitated and heavily used by Hewlett Packard scientific calculators to simplify entering complex expressions into the calculator without the use of brackets and without the need for using um, complex precedence rules for the operands. So normally, um, okay, so let's keep the stack here. Uh, it will come handy. <laughs> Uh, normally, when we want to write, for example, 3 plus 5, uh, we have an infix operator, which means it's in between the operands that it's using, right? So the function that we have here is plus, um, and plus takes two arguments, uh, two arguments, and then we can write it in three different ways, all right? So one, the most common way is infix. Uh, infix means it's in between the operands. The second um, is postfix. So postfix. So that's what the Polish reverse notation is. So we put the operands first and then we put the operation that will use the operands to do something with them. Uh, and then for cons you know co completeness, we have uh, a third um, possibility, which is a prefix. And in the prefix, the function comes first, and then go operations, uh, the operands uh, which the function will use. Right. So in um, in so if if we want to mimic. I mean, you know, plus is associative, so it doesn't matter in which order we do the arguments. Uh, so if we if we do a plus plus b is the same as b plus a. But for example, if we would like to do the same for uh, division, uh, that that would not it, it's not uh, associative. So we need to know which one is the first one, which one is the left L argument, right? So typically in infix. Op, um, operations, the left one is on the left hand side, so we know uh, which one is the left. Um, in the prefix one, the left one is also on the left hand side. So if we substitute, let's say we want to do 6 divided by 2, right? So if we do 6 divided by 2 in infix operations, we have it like this. If we do it in postfix, uh, let's do prefix first. So if we say divide, then we say 6 by 2. So the um, the left argument is on the left hand side. In the postfix operations, however, it's a little bit more complicated because um, we use a notion of a stack to pop the arguments from to fill the uh, the operations. So in, in this, um, so why we do this? Why we use this uh, notation? Well, um, the rationale is that we can now express complex rules uh, without the need for brackets or for uh, precedence rules. So, for example, if I have um, a more complex operation, for example, 2 plus 3, we multiply it by 10 and then we divide um, the result by uh, so that would be 5, 50, so divided by 5 plus 5, okay? So here I have kind of an, a com complex expression, uh, and I have four operations. I have plus, multiplication, division, and uh, addition again. Um, and I need to know what binds with what, whether I'm doing this first or whether I'm doing this first. And because a multiplication is the same uh, 
you know, precedence rule as a division. I will do this first, but because addition is weaker than multiplication, I have to have these brackets here. So it, it like the representation of this expression is quite complex and I need to know those rules and I need to know the brackets. If I um, don't want to use the brackets, what I can do is I can rewrite it um, and I will rewrite it um, plus multiply. So that is, I got it rewritten up to this point. Um, in a single reverse Polish notation without the use of brackets or precedence rules. And now I need to do this. So I need to add uh, five with, with five. So I will do, um, I will put five, five addition. And then I'm dividing um, the first part which is this part by the second part. So I need to divide it, but I need to um, swap the order of the of the operands because my 10 will be first to be consumed and I want it to be the second. So I would have to, before I can do this div uh, division, I have to rotate the, the element. So in fact, I will have to take this um, so let's rewrite this. So I will put five, five plus. All right. So this expression, um, this expression uh, using the infix operations. So if I say um, with infix looks like this uh, oh, in infix notation and in Postfix, it looks like this, and they, they are exactly the same. Uh, and the way they are executed works like this: we first put five on top of the stack. So again, we we sort of uh, use the notion of a stack to evaluate it. So I, I'm putting five and then putting five. So this is those two elements, and then I'm doing the addition. So because um, I'm pop popping the elements from the stack and returning the result into the stack, what will happen is I will consume those two values and put 10 on top of the stack. So that's um, kind of at that point now. And then I'm put pushing on the stack three values, 10, three, and two. So I will do 10, three, and two. And then I'm doing the addition operation. So now I will consume uh, two and three and substitute it with the value five, which is the result of doing this operation. And then I have a uh, multiplication. So again, I will consume uh, two elements from the stack. So I will consume my five and I will consume this 10 and will replace it with 50 because I multiplied um, the, the, the top two elements. And then I'm doing the division. So again, I will consume 50 and 10, and I will replace it with the 50 divided by 10, which is five. So at the end of this expression, I will end up with five on top of the stack. And that's the result of evaluating this expression, which is exactly the same as evaluating this expression. Um, so, you know, this, um, Come on. This uh, allows me to say this is five, and then this is also five, right? So we have kind of a two simple concept. One is uh, operations on the stack, and the second one is a reverse Polish notation, which allows you to express computations or um, operations without providing the parameters, but popping and pushing things from the stack. So a related concept to this is um, a concept of a virtual machine. So a virtual machine is a kind of an abstract model of how computation happens, uh, what is the input and what is the output and how the operation 
work in such a way that it's independent of the actual implementation. So a particular virtual machine can be implemented as a register-based uh, machine, in which case we will have operations which uh, address registers and uh, put values or consume values from registers and put results into registers. Or we can have a machines that are stack-based and they consume uh, operations from and put va values into the stack. The difference is that uh, with register-based machines, uh, we have quite a complex instruction sets because our instructions, for example, um, let's delete this. Um, so for example, if, if I have uh, a register-based machine uh, and I want to add two numbers, I will have an operation add, but I have to say um, operand one, where, where, where do I find it? Um, operand two. Um, because, you know, adding two numbers, I, I need to specify uh, from where the operands come. And then uh, there is a operand 3, which addresses where the results will go. So, for example, like in this case here, uh, I have two operands, 5 and 30, and uh, in register registers R1 and R2. So, what will happen is I would have to say add register 1 register 2 and then I have to say where to put the result and in this particular example the result goes into register 3 so I have to say register 3 so as you can see my operation add is quite complex because I have to have three parameters to it where I will address of where to get the operate operands from and where to put the results into in contrast a stack based uh, equivalent of add, which we just used uh, a moment ago, is this. Uh, because add always consumes two elements from the stack and puts the uh, result onto the stack. So you, you have no need, uh, no need for additional parameters. And that makes the operations really simple. Uh, because the operations are just operations, they don't take any parameters uh, and they always take parameters from the stack. So it's, um, it simplifies the instruction set and the instructions can be encoded in a very fixed length um, style because they don't take flexible amount of um, arguments, even though they do take flexible amount of arguments from the stack. So for example, if I have um, negate operation, uh, if I want to negate a number, so for example, I want to negate the value of register one in the register based machine, I would have to say, okay, negate R1. Um, in the case of a stack, that would be called just negate, um, which means um, negate, which means negate takes one value from the stack and puts, puts it back after negating it. Uh, add takes two values from the stack. So even though negate and add take different number of arguments, different number of operands, the encoding is fixed because they never take any parameters here. Whereas here, uh, in this case, um, I would need an operand one for what to negate, right? So uh, for example, um, yeah, what, what to negate and where to put it back. Right? So we usually need to uh, specify where the results will go. So add takes kind of three parameters and negate takes two of what to negate and when th where the result will go. Um, so stack-based machines have advantages and those advantages make them quite popular for specifying abstract computations. And for example, uh, Java Virtual Machine is specified using a stack-based approach and the operations always consume uh, arguments from the stack and put the uh, results into the stack. But it's just a specification, right? So when you're implementing it, uh, you can implement it, especially if you're implementing it for performance or some va um, uh, requirements as a register-based machine. So an example for that is a Dalvik um, Android virtual machine, which is a re-implementation of the Java virtual machine. Um, in a register style, uh, and it's optimized for a mobile platform. So even though the specification on the abstract level uses stack, the actual implementation 
simulates the use of a stack by the use of registers, right? Uh, and that may provide a better mapping to the particular hardware architecture and better implementation in terms of memory usage or, or performance. Um, so in summary, uh, we went quite quickly through uh, three main concepts here. Uh, one is that uh, specifying computations in an abstract way is usually simpler with a stack-based approach, stack-based virtual machine. Um, and to deal with a stack-based machine, it's useful to use a reverse Polish notation because it's kind of designed to work alongside a stack data structure. So pushing, popping, and operating on kind of a values renders itself really well uh, to be used through the uh, reverse Polish notation. Um, this concept of stack-based machines has been taken to a programming level. And fourth is a, a programming language which is imperative, stack-based, and procedural. And it is using the concept of stack as a fundamental data structure. Um, and here is a, a simple example of a program uh, of a routine uh, specified in, in, uh, in fourth. And as you can see, the, the while loop is, you know, turned around. So normally what we would say in the normal uh, prefix or infix notation, we would say uh, we will mix uh, prefix and infix notation here. So what uh, normally what would happen is, uh, let me just delete this. So if I quickly delete and write uh, the typical prefix and infix notation, what we would say, we would say while, which is uh, in a prefix notation. And then we would say uh, particular condition is bigger than particular number, right? So we would have kind of a notation like this. And then um, while and um, bigger than um, our functions. This function is used in a prefix notation, so the arguments follow. And this function is used in an infix notation with the left and right arguments on both sides, right? So this is a mix of um, prefix and infix notation. In uh, postfix notation, um, in a clean postfix notation, it is like this, right? So all arguments are used in a inf um, postfix notation. So while takes what's on the stack and what's on the stack is um, smaller than, uh, and then we have two operands which are um, on on the stack, right? So we have less less than two five five first, and then i i second, right? So um, we basically have um, this um, logical expression in the postfix notation. Um, so that that language is still maintained. There is a GNU implementation for it, and um, blockchain systems, in particular Bitcoin, has been inspired by Forth and uh, they've used um, a Forth-like programming language to represent um, the instructions which operate on the transactions or on the logic of what happens inside the, the blockchain itself. So in summary, uh, blockchains do require a, some form of computational model which can be used for expressing computations and they, most of them uh, adapted fourth like um, stack based approach in which uh, we have a kind of an abstract notion of a stack and we can implement it in different ways. But as for specifying it, it's kind of a simpler because the instructions are quite compact and um, quite simple to express the, the semantics and the logic of what needs to happen. Um, and then our fourth like programming languages used to express this logic. In the next module, we will look at some examples of, of those um, instructions and how they operate on the uh, transaction data and how do we match the locking and unlocking scripts for spending um, assets in, uh, in Bitcoin in particular. All right, thank you very much.